the scary night, Emily home alone. It was a dark and stormy night. Emily sat alone in her large, old house, waiting for her parents to return from their weekend getaway. She had always enjoyed being home alone, but tonight was different. She felt uneasy, as if someone was watching her. Emily tried to distract herself by watching TV, but the staticky images on the screen only made her feel more unsettled. She decided to go upstairs and take a shower, hoping it would calm her nerves. As she stepped into the bathroom, she heard a faint scratching sound. She froze, listening intently. It sounded like it was coming from inside the walls. Emily shook it off as her imagination and turned on the shower. As she shampooed her hair, she heard the scratching again. Louder this time, she quickly rinsed off and got out of the shower, wrapping herself in a towel. Emily walked out of the bathroom and saw a shadowy figure standing at the end of the hallway. She gasped, frozen in fear. The figure moved closer, revealing a grotesque, disfigured face. Emily screamed and ran back into the bathroom. Locking the door behind her, she could hear the figure banging on the door, trying to get in. Emily crouched down behind the toilet, shaking with terror. After what felt like an eternity, the banging stopped. Emily cautiously stepped out of the bathroom, but the figure was nowhere to be seen. She quickly locked herself in her bedroom, barricading the door with anything she could find. As she sat in her room, Trying to catch her breath, Emily noticed that her phone was dead. She had forgotten to charge it before her parents left. She was completely cut off from the outside world. Emily tried to convince herself that it was all in her head, that she was just imagining things. But deep down, she knew that something was terribly wrong. Suddenly, she heard footsteps outside her door. They were slow and deliberate as if the person was trying to be quiet. Emily's heart raced as she clutched a pair of scissors tightly in her hand. The doorknob jiggled, and Emily held her breath. She was prepared to defend herself at all costs, but the door didn't budge. Emily waited for what felt like hours, but the footsteps eventually faded away. She sat alone in the darkness wondering what was happening in her house. She knew she had to leave, but the idea of facing whatever was out there was too terrifying to consider. Hours passed, and Emily tried to sleep, but every time she closed her eyes, she saw the figure's twisted face. She was trapped, alone in her own home, with no way out. Just as dawn was breaking, Emily heard a knock on the door. She cautiously approached it, holding the scissors tightly. She asked who it was, but there was no answer. Emily slowly opened the door and saw a police officer standing outside. He asked if she was okay, and she burst into tears. The officer told her that a serial killer had escaped from a nearby prison and was on the loose. Emily's parents arrived home shortly after relieved to find their daughter unharmed. But the memory of that night stayed with Emily forever. She never forgot the fear she felt, the sense of being completely alone and helpless. From that night on, Emily never took her safety for granted. She knew that anything could happen, and she always made sure to be prepared. The horror of being home alone had changed her forever. It was another night alone for Emily. Her parents were out of town again, and she was left to fend for herself in their big, old house. This time, however, she was more prepared. She had installed new locks on all the doors and windows and made sure that all the curtains were drawn tightly shut. But no amount of preparation could have prepared her for what was about to happen. As she sat alone in the living room, watching TV, she heard a faint scratching sound coming from the front door. She turned down the volume and listened carefully, trying to determine where the sound was coming from. The scratching continued, growing louder and more persistent with each passing moment. 
Emily's heart raced as she realized that someone was trying to break in. She reached for her phone, but to her horror, it was dead. She had forgotten to charge it again. Emily quietly tiptoed to the front door, trying to see who was outside without being seen. But the window was covered in fog, and she couldn't make out anything in the darkness. Suddenly, the scratching stopped, and Emily let out a sigh of relief. Maybe whoever it was had given up and left. But then she heard a voice. A low, menacing whisper coming from outside. I know you're in there. Emily, it said, you can't hide from me forever. Emily's heart pounded in her chest as she backed away from the door. She knew she had to call the police, but her phone was dead. She had no way to call for help. The voice outside grew louder and more insistent. Come on, Emily. It taunted. Open the door. Let me in. Emily backed away from the door, trying to think of a way out. She looked around the room, searching for something she could use to defend herself. But all she could find were a few books and a vase. Just then, she heard a crash from upstairs. Emily froze her heart racing as she tried to determine what was happening. Was someone in the house with her? She grabbed the vase and slowly crept up the stairs, trying to make as little noise as possible, but each step creaked beneath her feet, echoing through the empty house. When she reached the top of the stairs, she saw that the door to her parents' bedroom was open. She cautiously approached the doorway, holding the vase tightly in her hand. But as she peered into the room, she saw something that made her blood run cold. There, standing in the center of the room, was a figure dressed in black, its face shrouded in shadow. Emily tried to scream, but no sound escaped her throat. The figure turned to face her, and she saw its eyes glowing red in the darkness. It raised a hand, pointing at her accusingly. Emily bolted down the stairs the vase shattering behind her. She ran to the front door, but it was locked tight. She tried to find something to break the window, but there was nothing. The figure appeared at the top of the stairs, its glowing eyes fixed on her. Emily backed away, her heart racing as she realized that there was no way out. The figure stepped forward, its hand outstretched. Emily closed her eyes waiting for the inevitable, but when she opened them again, the figure was gone. She stood alone in the darkness, shaking with fear. She knew that she had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death, and she also knew that she would never be the same again. The horror of that night had changed her forever. As Emily stood there in the darkness, she could feel something cold and clammy brushing against her bare skin. It felt like fingers, long and bony, reaching out to touch her. She screamed and tried to run, but she felt trapped, like she was stuck in a nightmare that would never end. Suddenly, she heard a faint whisper coming from somewhere in the house. It was a voice she recognized, her mother's voice. Emily, come to me. The voice said, I'm in the basement. Emily felt a jolt of terror shoot through her body. She knew that her mother was not in the house, but the voice was so convincing, so real. It sounded just like her mother. She hesitated for a moment, unsure of what to do, but then she felt the fingers on her skin again, and she knew that she had to get away from them. She ran towards the basement door praying that it would open to her surprise. It did. She descended the stairs, her heart racing as she called out for her mother. The basement was dark and damp, with concrete walls and a dirt floor. As Emily's eyes adjusted to the darkness, she saw something moving in the shadows. It was her mother, or at least something that looked like her mother. But this was not the warm loving woman who had raised her. This was a twisted, grotesque version of her mother, with black eyes and a twisted smile. It reached out to grab her, but Emily turned and ran, her screams echoing through the empty basement. 
As she ran, she heard more whispers coming from the darkness. She could not understand what they were saying, but she knew that they were not human voices. They were the voices of the dead, the tormented souls of those who had died in this house. Emily's feet pounded against the concrete floor as she ran, her breath coming in short. Panic gasps. She could hear the sounds of something chasing her. Something that was not quite human. Suddenly, she tripped and fell, slamming her head against the concrete floor. As she lay there, dazed and disoriented, she saw the figure looming over her. It was the same figure that had been outside her front door earlier that night, with its glowing red eyes and twisted grin. Emily tried to crawl away, but it was no use. The figure grabbed her by the ankles and began dragging her across the floor. She could feel its cold breath on her neck, and she knew that this was the end. But then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the figure was gone. Emily lay there, panting and shaking, as she tried to make sense of what had just happened. She knew that she could not stay in this house any longer. She had to get out, no matter what it took. With a newfound determination, she stood up and began to climb the stairs. But as she climbed, she could hear the whispers growing louder and more insistent. They were calling out to her, promising her untold horrors if she stayed in this house. Emily knew that she had to ignore them, to keep climbing, to keep moving towards the light. But the darkness seemed to be closing in around her, suffocating her, trying to pull her back down into its grasp. As she burst through the front door and into the cool night air, Emily felt a wave of relief wash over her. She had escaped, but she knew that she would never forget the horror she had experienced that night. It would stay with her forever, a constant reminder of the evil that lurked in the darkness, waiting to claim its next victim.